As my year 10 students know, we've been doing a practice project this year. So this is going to give you an idea about how you might tackle a project in year 11. It's definitely not a template. And it's also something that you can't just, just copy either in whole or in part. So you need to do your own work. OK, uh, but whilst you have been um, doing your write up and you've been building your project, um, I've also been typing up as well, as you know. So to give you an idea about like how I edit the formulas and how I how I would like to see a document formatted. But as I say, this is not a template, so you may have another way. You might want to do it in PowerPoint. Or whatever but you know ultimately it needs to, the, the presentation and the content needs to be uh, ideally as as good as this and in some cases better because you know this is not assessed work so you know for me I'm just quickly typing stuff up which might not be as comprehensive as I would hope if, if I were going to do it for real so for people not familiar with that, what we've been working on let me just show you this the circuit okay you know there's, there's not a lot there in fact this, this part isn't even included. That's just so I can see whether the um, power rails powered up. Um, but there's not a massive amount here. But in a GCSE project, uh, you're expected to have uh, at least five subsystems. And, and that is what this, this circuit includes. OK, so you know, su subsystems in Circuit Wizard can be um, they, they can be you know, really quite simple. So. Uh, we come on to looking at the subsystems. We're, go we're basically going to have a quick whiz through my document, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'll be able to bookmark individual sections um, in in YouTube, so you can refer to it. You won't be able to copy. I'll probably be whizzing through too quickly. Okay, so um, you know, start off with the title, um, and we've we've got these automatically generated uh, table of contents, which I hope you agree look really good, and also having the page numbering is really useful. So first of all, you need to start out with uh, identifying the problem. Um, so my client has started building in the garden and concerned someone may basically fall into the excavation. So we need some sort of safety light. So then you, after identifying the problem in a real project, I would, I would type a little bit more for that. Then you need to um, briefly explain what it is that um, your product is going to do in terms of function, okay, in terms of outcome. So that's what I've got there. Then I come up with a design specification. Ideally numbered points, uh, ideally in a table, because then when you do your final evaluation, it's much easier to, to copy um, the, the specification and then maybe add another uh, column or two to, you know, say, you know, to appraise whether you've actually uh, or to evaluate whether you've actually um, completed those and, and to what extent. Um, I like to have some justification because then if you justify, you, you show that you have thought about the problem. You're not just specifying things that will be in your product without actually, you know, like without actually really linking that to the original uh, the problem. OK, so have those. Um, ideally, you're going to have some uh, you're going to have several uh, and you're going to have some. If you look at the mark scheme, you have some which are quantitative. So things with quantities, things with numbers. And then also things like qualitative, which are just features. Now, I have posted a video about qualitative and quantitative things before. You might also like to have things with um, parameters or tolerances, you know, like plus or minus uh, 10, 20 percent or whatever it happens to be. So then it's a good idea to come up with a system block diagram. Now, uh, GCSE projects, I think, need to have about five uh, or more subsystems. So each one of these blocks is identifying a possible subsystem. You know, this is the initial stages of planning. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to have a test switch. So we can press the test switch and, and see whether the uh, product comes on. Um, there'll be a threshold adjustment so we can adjust, you know, light levels at which our flashing light comes on. That will be controlling the reference voltage, which will be compared uh, with, a, the, with the um, value from the light sensor. We're going to or logically or whether the test switch is pressed or the comparator outputs a logic high, that's then going to enable uh, the a stable timer and then optionally have a transducer driver to drive an LED. Now, in my uh, product, I haven't actually used a transducer driver. Let me just quickly show you my uh, my product working. So I'll just look up the battery, the six volt battery pack there. And uh, as I say, ignore that. That's just showing me whether the um, rails are powered up and at the moment my flashing LED or my LED is not flashing but if I press the test switch press and hold 
then my LED flashes and if I release then it stops and also if I and uh, there we go if I cover over the LGR the light sensor then it starts flashing as well I'll just hit the lights you'll have the same effect hopefully uh, there we go okay so that works uh, and I won't do it now but this is the trim pot the potentiometer which we can adjust to change the level of brightness at which the uh, light starts flashing okay so um, then once you've identified the, um, the overall the system blocks that you're going to build your product uh, from because we're going to have like a systems approach to designing then individually we're going to um, design and, and test and evaluate each one of those subsystems so they should be something we can test individually so the first one i would start off with nice easy one light sensor you explain what it's going to do give a possible circuit design uh, simulate it i normally suggest that we test it both in simulation like in circuit wizard uh, and then also do a breadboard prototype as well. Now, uh, when you do the testing, what you should do, you should say, I will do, I will perform this test. You know, how you will do it. Don't just state like the outcome of the test without saying what you're going to do. State what you're going to do, what you expect the results to be, and then you tabulate or you put into a table of the actual results. Um, and, and then you can then uh, evaluate whether or you can you know conclude whether it actually met what you thought it was going to do and maybe you need to change something whatever it happens to be okay now with breadboard prototyping I sometimes include a little circuit diagram just to show like where I'm going to connect um, voltmeters and things like that okay so and then also evidence that you've actually built this like little mini subsystem it, it's only a resistor and uh, an LGR here now what I actually found is my initial uh, suggestion for an LGR 22 sorry for a resistor uh, was a little bit too high so I actually through my testing which was totally valid I uh, then reduced it to 2.2k and that worked much better and I've tabulated that, that stuff there Next one then, um, a reference voltage subsystem. So this is the one that's, you know, we, we've got these two analog values now. We've got one from the light sensor, one from the, uh, the reference voltage subsystem. And then we're going to put those into an analog comparator, which is going to output a, a digital, uh, you know, high or low. Um, so there we go. It's a potentiometer, basically. Um, throw in a few calculations, you know, rather than just put values into directly into your document, show how you've calculated those. Uh, once again, you can simulate it, you know, tabulate um, your results and, and, and your testing table, um, show the breadboard prototype. If you're taking measurements, you know, you can you can like annotate your um, images there. Um, and then we got the voltage comparator. So, you know, e each one of these subsystems you should be able to um, to develop independently because, you know, that that's how the subsystems work independently, which then you, you know, you, you put them together. That's the whole idea of the systems block diagram. Um, so yeah, systems block diagram and the systems approach. Um, so then we go through that. Okay. Uh, I thought that was quite useful as my reference just to include an image. I really, I should have referenced that. That no one came off the internet somewhere. Um, of the um, of the operational amplifier because I've used a quad operational amplifier. I've got um, four comparators in there for four op amps, uh, and and so you know it's useful because then you know which ones you're using. Uh, in my particular case, I've got my potential divider there, the LDR and the resistor. I've got the um, the trim pot there, the potentiometer, and so these blue wires are the, those analog value um, signals coming from those um, two subsystems. Go into the inputs, those are the inputs, and then the outputs up there. Okay. Um, so, you know, talk about how you will. This is the testing, you know, I will do something, and then the actual, the expecting the actual results, and then conclude. Okay. Uh, next one then is a test switch to test whether it's working. Uh, and then, you know, that's pretty straightforward a switch and a pull down resistor. Um, this seemed appropriate to have a little truth table for this. I did some calculations again, um, you know, how I'm going to test it um, and then, you know, evidence you've actually done it. Uh, then, then I need to logically or that. I didn't actually need to use an IC for that. I'm not going to get into the details about how this works. You know, it is in, the, in this document. Um, and then the next one then is the A stable timer, which has a reset pin. We're going to use that reset pin with the output, the uh, logical or to, you know, to make or disable this, um, this A stable timer. 
uh, show my calculations, uh, show the circuit design, um, a simulation in circuit wizard. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and I show that, you know, when the when I'm pulling the uh, reset pin high or low, you know, the effect on whether the A stable is running or not. Then there should be a breadboard prototype. Um, and, you know, crop your pictures down so that it shows just that subsystem that would probably be appropriate. Um, and then I'm doing some testing here. Now I'm using a USB based oscilloscope. And uh, we got loads of these in the classroom, as I think you're aware. It looks like I've done this one at home, actually. Evidence I'm wearing jeans. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, use use two channels because then you can then arrange the Pico scope screen. So you've actually got two scope views as well. Very very nice. Okay, and we can do things like measuring the frequency, um, and we can also measure the amplitude now. Measuring the frequency when when you first enable the A stable because the A stable is not normally running because we're using a reset pin. When we first um, enable that A stable, it might take longer than the normal mark time because it's got to charge from say zero up to two thirds and then back down to one third, two thirds, one third, two thirds, and then like you know depending on when you release the um, the test switch or when the light sensor you know becomes bright, you know, that last pulse, that last mark might not be uh, quite as high as, as you were expecting. So the frequency, if you measure it like right across the window, across the entire trace, the frequency might not be quite the same. So you can you can um, get around that by this, this little white square here. Um, hopefully you can make out what I'm pointing to there, that little white square. You, you can pull that across and you can, you can add time rulers, the, these things here. And then when you add a measurement, you can say, I want measurement between the rulers. Uh, so that gives you, you know, just just the frequency between the rulers and, and not the other um, rubbish that you don't want. Um, then the, the LED, which is our output transducer or converts an electrical signal to light. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward, you know. What, what, what can you test there? Well, in my original design specification, I said that the you know it must it must draw less than you know a certain amount of power. So you know I, I can do some uh, calculations. I can uh, do some measurements as well. I think I use the yeah I use the uh, oscilloscope there to make some voltage measurements. Um, what else I do? I don't know. Okay, uh, without really looking through this, but. Um, Yep, uh, and then I did some more calculations, uh, you know, just the normal sort of calculations for the uh, current limiting resistor. Um, and then there's the, you know, current limiting resistor and an LED. Um, did some more stuff about, you know, measuring the frequency just to make sure by adding an LED didn't somehow change the frequency of the A stable timer. I mean, it shouldn't, but, you know, you, you can put this in because, you know, original design specification said the LED will flash at a certain frequency not that the A stable will run at a certain frequency, it's the LED. So really you sh should also be testing the LED. Um, yeah, stuff about how I've uh, done that testing. Um, then you need to present a final overall completed system diagram, which I've done here. Um, a component list, full component list. Now I quickly knock these up uh, early to doubt. I'm um, working at home at the moment because I'm in isolation, unfortunately, this week, or fortunately, whichever way you you want to look at it. So uh, I quickly knocked this one up. I haven't checked things for error. I mean, the whole document might have errors in it, but this is what I quickly knocked up. Um, yeah, so, you know, a list of all the items and the quantities. We sometimes call this a bill of materials. You don't need to include prices. Um, my students anyway, you're not, you're not paying for the parts. So you just, yeah, you just get it. Um, and then yeah, a photo of the whole physical circuit. I quite like it. Um, if you identify the bits of the circuit, you know, particularly if you're messy, uh, this is going to be really tough because maybe you've got like, you know, like wires all over the place. And this, this might encourage you to actually key fit like, you know, as chunk it up into subsystems. Uh, hopefully it will. Um, and then some sort of brief user guide, you know, what to do, like connect the battery, uh, press the switch, that sort of stuff. You know, nothing, nothing complex. Uh, to pad it out, really, I, I added a little, you know, a few photos. Just did this one quickly um, this morning. And then what I haven't done yet, um, and I don't know whether I'm going to bother actually, is is, is finished with an evaluation. You should your 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 year eleven project should include an evaluation, which you critically look at what you've done in terms of your project, in terms of the 
um, the, the circuit that you've built and think, you know, does this meet the design specification? The easiest way to do that is to copy that table you had in the design specification and then go through each one of those points in turn and say whether or not they've met or to what extent. Uh, and you've got to be critical about it, you know, so don't just say, oh, yeah, it works or, or it's not very good. Um, you've got to, you know, like pick holes and pick up, you know, things which you have done well as well. Be objective about it. Don't just say, oh, you yeah, whatever. Um, do do be quite clear about like particular object, particular parts of it. Uh, you also, um, well, that is part of the, you know, the original design specification. And then make, it says make two, but I would say make three, make four, if you like, suggestions for improvements, explaining how they might improve the product. And don't just say like, you know, stick it in a box or, you know, change the color of the LED or something. Oh, maybe that might be appropriate. But, um, you know, but why? why? Why does it make a difference? Um, maybe you need to change the frequency. Maybe maybe having the A-stable always running and then anding rather than oaring earlier on might have been a, like a more better way. I was going to say logical, but didn't mean like logic, logic. Uh, might might have been a better solution to it. Uh, maybe you might need uh, a Schmidt trigger or a Schmidt inverter in the circuit so it doesn't keep, you know, when it gets a bit borderline like um, dusk or something like that, this light doesn't keep on starting flashing and stopping flashing or, or, or something along those lines. Maybe we should have added that, that transducer driver like a MOSFET uh, to drive the LED. Maybe we should have stepped up the brightness or you know, but you need to um, you need to be quite detailed on that. So you know, not just like a paragraph. You know, I'm expecting a couple of pages, at least. All right. Well, I say at least. You know, that maybe 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 not at least, but you know, like over a couple of pages. Maybe you could do some research. Maybe you could find some other stuff that people have done or is is available and say, look, you know, I, I like this idea. This, this one would have been better, and that one is better than my system because. So you, then you can evaluate, you know, and you can compare. And so I haven't done that here. Um, I've got better things to do at the moment. All right. So hopefully, um, I don't know whether that's that's useful. Um, it might be useful also to some students studying at GCSE Electronics uh, elsewhere. Uh, I hope it is. OK. Um, um, make your teacher aware of this if, if you are elsewhere and uh, the teacher might find it themselves. So they'd be aware if you copy this and present it as your own work uh, and also the exam board, you know, if the exam board get like 10 copies of this uh, next year, that they're, they're going to pick up on that. OK, so don't cheat and um, yeah, stay safe and um, please subscribe. OK, goodbye.